Good morning, folks. We've got a couple articles to hit today, some eye candy from space, and some space weather. We have new sunspots on the south incoming and an increase in flaring and solar wind pressure, but we are going to begin with an update on our second video topic from yesterday, the sun diving comet. Its trajectory and velocity now clearly demonstrate it's not going into the sun. It will survive its close pass. It will likely bend a bit more, but is likely to leave the inner solar system northward here and not endure a whip around the sun. It continues inducing coronal mass ejections, and many of you yesterday asked why such a thing would be possible. Well, comets are electromagnetic interactors. The sun's magnetic fields and electric current sheets stream out past Pluto, and here in the inner solar system, they bunch up and get very complex, especially in interactivity. The charged particles of the comet Coma, not to mention the comet itself, interact with those circuits and have rapid impact back to the sun and down the line of the fields themselves. We'll keep an eye on its track today, but we'll also be monitoring the increase in X-ray production. Solar flares are slowly kicking back in with the appearance of the southern sunspots, but so far they have been impulsive and not producing much eruptive behavior on the Earth-facing side of the sun. There are several plasma filaments that we'll need to monitor as they have the position and size to be of concern if they erupt. Currently, geomagnetic conditions are mildly perturbed, but nowhere near storm levels. We're taking a minor enhancement from the coronal whole stream solar wind, but thus far, again, it's relatively minor. The main watches for today are that comet and the incoming sunspots for development as they turn into face Earth through the remainder of the week. Looks like there are even more coming in behind these ones. How about some eye candy up next? Abel 2256 focuses on this cluster of galaxies here, where the circumgalactic gas is tremendously excited by the interacting systems and their photoionization. It's an X-ray view here. But it's not until we go next to the radio view that we really set the mind ablaze. Wow, there is a lot going on here. A link to the article and description of what several of these features are, most interesting to me, are the jets. And I would also love it if Hubble and James Webb could point this way to add in UV and infrared light for a more complete spectrum of the system. Excellent paper here tracking ENSO variability, that's El Nino and La Nina, to solar activity centuries ago. The variability back then was even greater than over the last 60 to 70 years, a nice nod to the dozens of modern period studies suggesting the same correlations between the Sun and ENSO now. Last but not least, an excellent examination here by Professor Edmonds showing that the modern warming of Earth is actually more natural than human caused. We've had an increase in solar activity over the last century that's bigger than what we've had in thousands of years, and we've actually been at record low volcanic cooling activity, and even Tonga doesn't change that. They also find a 15-year lag in the solar wind impact of the atmosphere, which helps forecast a pronounced cooling over the next 40 years to come. And that's even if we keep polluting, and even if the volcanoes stay quieter. Below the video in the description box, you can get tickets to our Blitz Tour events in March and April. We look forward to seeing you out there. Also have links below to our playlists, books, one-on-one -on -one calls, and much more. We greatly appreciate your support. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.